You got this Occupy Wall Street crowd that you know wants you know wants to have a communist revolution, but hopefully we can have more of a free market, uh, a second American revolution, and understand that all the pain we're about to endure is because of government. It's not because of capitalism. It's not because of the free markets. And if we're going to have a, a, a bright future in this country, we're, we're, it's going to be based on going back to those values. The economy is about to implode. I'm like Dr. Doom. You know, we're not even near the bottom yet. So you know, we, first we got to have to hit rock bottom. You know, it's like you know, there's an expression, if you know, maybe some of the people here know about you know, rehab and alcohol abuse, or drug abuse. But generally, you got to hit rock bottom before you, before you can uh, you know, actually kick the habit. So we're, we're not there yet. I mean, we're, you know, we're, not, we're not at rock bottom. Uh, we're going to get there, though. I mean, we're going to have a real overdose on cheap money and government spending. And so I, 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 think, I think the real economic collapse is coming. And I think once it gets really, really bad, we get a collapse in the dollar, collapse in the bond market, massive inflation, lots, even lot more unemployment than we have now. That might be a catalyst to actually do the right thing and actually, you know, go back to a sound monetary policy and shrink the size of government. If we do that, you know, we, we, we can recover. But right now, we're still, we're still, we're still headed down. And I, unfortunately, the government's not going to do anything to prevent this because no, the government never tries to prevent a crisis because why should they do that? They might as well try to postpone it so they can get reelected. And that's what they're going to do. And eventually, when things are so bad that they figure either way they're not going to get reelected, then, 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 then maybe they'll do the right thing. But it's still not a sure thing. Say the economy does go down. I, mean, as I assume it will. I, I believe that it will. And, and then we react and we take a socialist approach and they blame it on capitalism. I mean, what is the way out? Well, they're already doing that. I mean, that, you know, the socialists are always going to blame it on capitalism. That's, you know, that's how socialism works. You infect capitalism with socialism, you screw it up, the economy gets bad, and then you blame it on capitalism. And now, and now you have a, 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 a means to promote your socialism. But the only way you can wreck capitalism is to infest it with socialism. And it's, it's, it's never capitalism's fault, but capitalism always takes the blame. And so that's, that's, their, that's their agenda. And that's why it's so important that we kind of educate Americans to understand what is the cause of our problems, that it isn't the markets, it isn't the greedy rich people who aren't paying enough taxes. The problem is government. All the, all the, the well-intentioned government programs have unintended consequences that backfire. How would you solve this mess if you were in charge today? You can't just solve it. I mean, first of all, I mean, we, 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 we've, we've, we've been very profligate. We've borrowed a lot of money. We've lived beyond our means. We've decimated our manufacturing base. There's a price to be paid. So there is no quick fix. It's like, you know, somebody is 300 pounds and, um, you know, they want to get healthy. I mean, you know, they got to diet. They got to exercise. So it's not fun, you know. So, you know, we, we got a lot of work to do. We're in a gigantic hole. But right now I know we're making the problems worse. So that's no good. Right? We got we got to deal with the problems. We got to admit what they are, and yeah, I mean, if I had the power to, to to fix everything, I would. And you know, we, you know, ultimately, you know, the free market works, you know, pretty well. How long does this recovery after the crash take? And then, what does the world look like during that recovery? And what does the world look like after the recovery? We are in a gigantic hole, so it, you know, we we got a lot of work to do to get out of it. But you know, we're not going to dig our way out of this hole, you know, with socialism. It's just not going to happen. Uh, so a lot of it depends on how we react to this crisis and whether the crisis means that people blame the government and we have less government. We really, you know, we not, not only do we get rid of the debt, we, we restructure the debt, but we dramatically uh, shrink government. We get rid of a lot of these entitlement programs, a lot of these taxes, and, you know, we free up uh, the markets and we have real entrepreneurship and people going out there and starting businesses and producing products and hiring people. Or, you know, we go completely the other way. And the government takes over the economy completely, and it's a complete disaster. What do you think is the safest place for our assets right now? I think the, the riskiest place is to be in U.S. dollars or the things that people perceive as safe, treasuries, muni bonds, corporate bonds. So you want to own, you, know, you could own gold, you could own silver, uh, you can have uh, stocks in foreign countries, as long as you pick the right countries. I think the U.S. dollar is on the verge of a meltdown. Gold's not going up, everything else is going down. That's what gold is telling you. Gold is just a barometer. It's measuring the value of currencies, and currencies are losing value. But more important, they're going to lose a lot more value in the future based on how much we're going to create. I mean, that is the problem. We are going to try to keep reflating this bubble. We're going to keep printing money. It's not going to work. It's not going to revive the economy. It's not going to create jobs. But they're going to keep doing it.
Uh, and the only thing reason they're going to stop is they realize that the whole thing is about to implode. You know, there's going to have to be a crisis, and then maybe we'll do the right thing. Maybe we won't. Maybe we'll just keep printing until the dollar is uh, confetti. Right now, you still have this false perception that the dollar is a safe haven. And as long as that's the case, then we're still living on borrowed time. But when the people start fleeing the dollar, that's when it's over. The government won't let the economy restructure because in the short run, the restructuring is going to be painful. But they're trying to perpetuate this bubble economy. It doesn't work. You know, so the banks aren't going to make any money. The banks are basically insolvent. And as soon as interest rates rise, the banks are going to fail again. So that's the main reason that the Fed is keeping rates low, because they know if they let rates go up, the banks are going to collapse, and the federal government's going to be insolvent as well. I'm talking to institutions that manage hundreds of billions of dollars. And most of them, when I ask them, how much gold do you have? How much gold stocks? It's basically zero, nothing. These are some of the biggest money management firms in the world, and they have no gold. All right. That's going to change. Eventually, they're going to have gold. They're going to have to buy it from me. It's going to be a lot more expensive. <laughs>